One thing competitive Pokemon has to deal with that many modern games don't is the fact that 99% of the time you can't expect a Pokemon to get any better before the next games come out. Most competitive games nowadays see various balance patches with buffs and nerfs for the characters within them, but doing this for Pokemon is a logistical nightmare considering there are almost 1000 of them at the time I'm making this video. But what about that 1%? Well, let's discuss the rare but interesting case of mid-gen buffs to Pokemon. These consist of Pokemon gaining access to new moves or abilities via move tutors, event distributions, etc. There are multiple cases of this across every Pokemon game, but because this is a VGC channel, we'll just start with Gen 4 since that's the generation that VGC began. And we'll mostly be covering the buffs that primarily affected VGC play, and I'll definitely be missing a few that mattered in singles, so obviously feel free to comment about those. But before we do that, please be sure to comment down below what topics you'd like me to cover in the future and subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to hit 50,000 subscribers before Scarlet and Violet drop so we can hit the ground running in Gen 9. Okay, let's get into it. The only case we'll be covering in Generation 4 is Scizor. In Gen 4, Scizor had access to the ability Technician. This ability boosts the power of moves 60 base power and under by 50%. Originally, Scizor didn't have much to abuse this ability with, but when Platinum came out, it gained access to Bullet Punch. With this, Scizor had access to not only a powerful priority move, but one that gave it reliable Steel Stab and got boosted to 60 base power from its measly 40. Coming off of Scizor's 130 base attack, it meant that Swords Dance Scizor was a force to be reckoned with. There are a few notable ones in Gen 5. This generation introduces Dream World abilities, which is actually a topic I covered in my last video if you want to check that out. But the majority of mid-gen buffs we see this gen come from Dream World abilities getting released. Conkeldor gained access to Iron Fist, an ability which grants a 1.2 times boost to all punching moves that Conkeldor uses. Being a fighting type, it's pretty big on punches. It got Ice Punch, Mock Punch, Drain Punch, Fire Punch, Thunder Punch. It really loves shoving its fist into things' faces, so if that's an Iron Fist, well, that just makes it even better. Amoongus gained access to Regenerator via Dream World. This ability allowed it to recover 30% of its health every time it switched out, as though it wasn't bulky enough. This made Amoongus especially threatening in VGC, as it can now Rage Powder away attacks and then just swap out to recover all of the damage it took for the partner Pokemon. Via Dream World ability, Clefairy gained access to Friend Guard, making all of its partners take 3 fourths damage as long as it was on the field, thus making it a very solid support Pokemon from that point on. And finally, the Genies gained access to their Therian forms via the Reveal Glass, which was released in Black and White 2. This isn't exactly a buff as much as it is just like a new Pokemon form, but it's worth mentioning, and obviously we got Defiant, Thunderous, and Tornadus as well as Sheer Force Landorus, but we'll cover those later on in Gen 8 but they didn't get those until the release of Dream Radar, which is a game you could get on your DS via the eShop. As for Gen 6, the big mid-gen buffs came as a result of move tutors becoming available in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. Most notably is Sylveon gaining access to Hyper Voice, which truly made its Pixelate a super threatening ability in doubles, as at the time Pixelate still gave moves that changed to Fairy a 30% boost in power rather than the current 20% boost. Through the release of Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, we also saw the release of a second batch of Mega Evolutions. While there are too many of them to cover all in depth, the Pokemon that received Mega's mid-generation are Beedrill, Pidgeot, Slowbro, Steelix, Sceptile, Swampert, Sableye, Sharpedo, Camerupt, Altaria, Glalie, Metagross, Latios, Latias, Rayquaza, Lopunny, Gallade, Audino, Deancey, and of course, Groudon and Kyogre, which actually gained primal forms, but they're basically Megas. Finally, we have a couple of event Pokemon which actually saw some play. Contrary Superior released, which took it from a bottom tier grass starter, to a fast and bulky grass Pokemon whose special attack would double every time it leaf stormed. So yeah, that was a pretty big one. Raichu also gained access to Endeavor via an event that ended up being on Wolf Glick's World Champion Team in 2016, but you can get more info on that via my lore video covering the topic. You know, once this one's over. Moving on to Gen 7, I guess it's time to address the elephant in the room. That's right. Decidueye got long reach via an event distribution in Pokemon Bank. Oh, sorry. Primarina got Liquid Voice via Pokemon Bank. Wait, I'm missing something. Nah, no, I'm not missing anything. Okay. Intimidate. It was an ability that Gyarados would run, and it actually got bounced via an event which allowed it to use Physical Max Airstream, which was actually pretty huge for it in VGC as it could deal significant damage to lots of Pokemon after a Dragon Dance. Okay, now let's talk about everyone's favorite intimidating fire type. Arcanine. This thing was really common in VGC 2017, but unfortunately it wasn't until a Pokemon Home distribution in 2019 that Passimian got its ability Defiant, which would have been excellent counterplay to this sort of strat as lowering any stat on this thing would grant it plus 2 attack instantly. Kinda sad it got it so late. 
I can't help but feel that in 2018 it might have been able to do something really cool against some really common Pokemon that I just can't really put my finger on. Speaking of stuff that didn't happen in Sun and Moon, in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, Kamoa gained access to an exclusive Z-move, which would grant it plus one in every single stat after dealing massive damage to both opposing Pokemon. From that point on, Kamoa would be able to use those race stats to sweep. Also, Incineroar got Intimidate. Okay, Generation 8. This was actually the first gen that we got DLC, so while other gens required a definitive version to release for move pools to get updates, this gen had tutors drop in the first DLC. First off, the Galar starters got access to their hidden abilities via a Pokemon home distribution, Inteleon got Sniper, but the two heavy hitters were definitely Grassy Surge Rillaboom and Libero Cinderace, which made this thing whatever type the move it uses is. They also got a second buff in the Isle of Armor DLC, where they all gained G-Max forms. These forms gave them all massively powerful max moves for their respective typings that had the secondary effect of ignoring opponents' abilities. Along with them, Blastoise and Venusaur got their max forms, which gave them access to water and grass type clones of Charizard's G-Max Wildfire, which dealt 1 6 of the opponent's max HP as damage for 4 turns. Finally, within this DLC, Pokemon got access to some pretty fun tutor moves. The most notable of these were Grassy Glide Rillaboom for huge priority damage, Expanding Force Indeedee for huge spread damage, and Meter Beam Collider also for a much stronger max Vocalith. The last major buff that I'll cover is the release of the ability patch, which would allow for the Pokemon it got used on to access its hidden ability. The biggest Pokemon to benefit from this was Defiant Thunderous, which while it was legal in Gen 5, was not legal in any gen of VGC until now, because VGC actually requires you to use Pokemon attained within the generation that you're playing. Alternatively, you could acquire Defiant Thunderous simply by using the Pokemon Battle Ready NPC at the Battle Tower on your old Gen 5 Defiant Thundee. However, this feature obviously wasn't available until Generation 8. That was a very brief look into the many Pokemon that received mid-generation buffs. I didn't have much time to get into the wide implications of many of them since there are so many examples across every single game, and the metagames of each VGC format are so diverse and complicated that it'd be like a whole video to talk about each and every single one, so I just figured I'd make this as brief and easy as possible for people to understand. But let me know if I missed any big ones in the comment section down below, and be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Also, a special thanks to my Patreon supporters for helping keep the channel afloat. If you want to see your name at the end of these videos, please consider supporting me for as low as $1 a month on Patreon. And if you want to see some bonus videos each week, check out my $5 Patreon tier. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.